And welcome everybody here on Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Elder Inspiration. Going to be our next deck. We have a bunch of fun decks today. All right, so this one is going to be a Targon deck with a lot of Invoke, a lot of Celestials. Um, we haven't played a bunch of Celestials here recently, but we're going to be doing that today. We're going to be mixing the Celestials with Green Glade Elder. This is a three mana card from Ionia. 3-1 when I'm summoned to grant all allies in hand plus one plus one. So basically what, what our goal here is to get the celestial card cosmic inspiration that grants all of our allies plus two plus two. And then also use Green Glade Elder to grant all of our allies plus one plus one. And basically just use those two together and just have like big buffs for like going wide with a bunch of uh, units that would usually be smaller because they have Invoke, right? Like Lunari Priestess is usually pretty small for a three drop because it has Invoke, but maybe with the help of Green Glade Elder and Cosmic Inspiration, we can buff it up. Same with Mountain Scryer and Moon Dreamer, this kind of stuff. So it should be pretty fun to try out. We also got Sparklefly at the top end. Well, not at the top one, but it's a, the elusive that if we buff it up, it's, in, it's an elusive with spell... Ah, an elusive with lifesteal. There we go. Got it that will help heal our nexus and also finish out games we got behold the infinite that can find cosmic inspiration lunari priestess moon dreamer all these can find cosmic inspiration and that's kind of the goal of our deck uh, star shaping as well all right so we'll get to it we'll try it out we got aurelian soul at the top end we got eclipse dragon that can make our, our aurelian soul cost eight mana instead of ten and then we also have a karma in here because if we if we do find cosmic inspiration and we have an enlightened karma, that's right, double cosmic inspiration because <laughs> it will cast it twice. So therefore, we will uh, have all of our allies get plus four plus four for the rest of the game. Pretty crazy. So basically, we're just going to kind of sit around and kind of do nothing until we buff up all of our stuff and then eventually just like attack and end the game. Um, you know, kind of, kind of just like as a, like an afterthought, but really our, our main thought is just to buff up all of our stuff. All right, so let's get to it. Let's go and try it out. Elder Inspiration. Zoe Aphelios. That sounds like some champions that are going to punish us for just sitting around and do, doing nothing for a long time. Okay, so we're going to start with mulliganing everything and trying again. Really, the, the main thing here is, like, turn one Zoe. If they have turn one Zoe, we are in a lot of trouble. And that's why, like, none of those cards really helped against turn one Zoe, which is why I mulliganed everything. So really hoping not turn one Zoe. <laughs> Coin flip, one hour game. Here we go. Pass, pass, pass. All right, they got Ascended Cosmo and Ascended Place. We have Targon Cosmo and Targon Place. Oh, they had turn one, Zoe. Well, good game. It was close. They slow rolled that Zoe, too. Well, it was a pretty close game. Well, I mean, it's the best. <laughs> it's the best I got. So they got three extra mana than I do, and a free, two free super cool star charts. All right, gonna take the meteor shower. That's a card that can kill an Aphelios. Another mountain scryer. That's interesting. I'm not afraid. This is a wee bit free. Embrace the night, the failures. Kill them both. Kill them both. Kill them both. 
No. So close. Yeah, that's still not really fair. Only a fool would enter battle of the pair. Bring a foot and bow! Woo you we scrub! Cause that was like turn five. They like played Boxtopus and a Felios and another Boxtopus that, that took no damage. And also, like, the spell to protect Aphelios, and also the Lunari Duskbringer. Did all of that on turn 5. I just have so many moon weapons, super cool star chart stuff. Yuck. <laughs> you think they'll probably nerf... You think they're going to just nerf uh, Boxtopus and not change Aphelios one bit? That would be disappointing. No, yeah, Shreem card back not not animated. Looks like Veil Temple is kind of the way to go in these Targon mirrors. How you get that extra two mana every single turn, with the game lasting so many turns, that extra two mana looks very valuable. And then obviously just the increase in size, right? Like if it wasn't for Veil Temple, Aphelios would still be three power. Now it would have the spell shield, but. Man, they're going to Cosmic Inspiration against us? That was like the whole point of my deck was Cosmic Inspiration. I really need the the nine mana spell. Not any of these things. Okay, so it looks like they were a little bit better Targon deck with Veil Temple and Aphelios, and they had the turn one Zoe. Yep, we'll go ahead and head on over to the next game. Okay, cool. Not a Targon deck. They're going to be all, you know, Thresh, Nasus. They're going to be about slaying stuff. So they're going to have, like, your um, Curse Keeper, Blight of Caretaker starts that are going to be difficult to defeat. We'll see how we do. Okay, we got some earlier stuff this time. That's good. I like our opening hand. All right, so I'm gonna pass here. Cause really the shield bearer is like for defense. If they're not playing anything the first couple of turns, we don't need to play that shield bearer. The desert, by my side. 
Now I can make everything larger with this Green Glade Elder. Alright, good start for us so far. Alright, no Cosmic Inspiration. Um, taking one of these, these two cards, either Messenger or Equinox. I could see taking Equinox because they're a Curse Keeper deck, but Messenger is also just like one mana 2-2 two -two draw card. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, we definitely have a better hand this game. We are also not playing against the best champions in the entire game with Zoe and Aphelios. And, you know, like, they had turn one Zoe, turn four, Veil Temple. We don't have to deal with that stuff. And then, remember, their turn five, the last game of, like, multiple box to post and Aphelios. And, and protection for Aphelios. And even another one drop, all of that on turn five last game. Like, that was just too much. Much easier not playing against Tarkon. Cosmic Inspiration. I'm not even looking at the other cards. <laughs> we find that card, that's the card I wanted. We got the Messenger in hand. So we can't get rid of that. No! I had the Green Glade Elder earlier, then we are going to have Cosmic Inspiration. We were going to have Elder Inspiration. Man, what a jerk opponent. It reminds us there is always more to discover. What a jerk opponent. Sun this, moon that, adults are boring. That's the whole point of our deck. Aziz, command! Alright, either Star Shaping or Karma. I guess Star Shaping. Yes! Which I don't behold another Celestial card right now. Hmm. I guess I'll have to cast this Behold the Infinite. Silver, so I can play Aurelian Soul next turn. Alright, good. They didn't counter it this time. Close to putting in some Nasuses. Pretty close. Alright, so that's going to level up Thresh. I can cast Sparklefly this turn and attack for 4 and heal my Nexus for 4. But I'm at 20. I can't really heal above 20, so... Hush. Very good against Nasus. All right, so they're going to have two Nasus. Right, we're going to get this route. 
Yeah, I think that we have to play Hush this turn, so I, I think that we can't really play Aurelian Soul. So we can go, we can Moon Silver, and be able to go Karma Hush, and this Sparkle Fly. Do still get to level up Nasus, but at least it's only one instead of two. The expanse of eternity stretched out before me. Okay, so I can go Zoe, Moondreamer, or Aurelian Soul. Aurelian Soul won't level up if I just go Aurelian Soul. Let's go Zoe, Moondreamer. Zoe, wanna see how good my aim is? Deal. Lux, where are you? Where are you? Eh, we'll be fine. Ugh. That's not too good. I'll play you first. Okay. So will they play anything before attacking? If so, like, the Crescent Strike can be awesome if they do. I'll tell a story. Yeah, I think that's probably my best hope. Super cool star chart. Pretty nice with leveled up karma. Zoe's at three. Oh, right, I can't block any of the, with any of these. Well, that's really problematic because of Atrocity. Yeah, hopefully not atro Atrocity. It does kill that. I mean, I guess I could just do this on this one. Kill that one. Or I can play Aurelian Soul. Yeah, basically so basically that's that's the game. If they have atrocity, they're gonna win. If they don't, we have a chance. Still not leveling up Aurelian Soul. So I have six mana. That's not enough for Immortal Fire. Let's 
six. It's a good draw. Really? They will learn just as we did. So close to leveling you up, Zoe. So close. Life do they have? They have 11. So we don't level up early in Soul, but we do level up Zoe. It's still, right, like at this, you know, they have atrocity with a 20 power NASA as we lose, but. <laughs> My poor Zoe. So much, so much minus one, minus zero from NASA and triple sand spinner. Gives them all elusive, of course. Including a really soul. And there we go. Alright. No atrocity. Victory today. No victory for them. Tomorrow. GG's. No, back to Zoe Felios. No. I better not have turn one Zoe. Why can't I have turn one Zoe? So we okay. We got Sparkle Fly that can block after turn one after they've already hit me and gotten a thing. Night flowers upon my no more hiding. Yeah, that's Nasus, the card that gave that uh, those scarabs for the effect. Sorry, prediction just started. Yeah, so once you have a leveled up Nasus, it has the ability where um, all of your opponent's units get minus one, minus zero, and that's what those little bugs, those scarabs, um, that's what those are. Yeah, triple sparkle fly across the sky. We're going all sparkle fly. Their scent travels on the night air. Mm. Well, the it was a good game. It was close. I'm still good to scrap. Start the Judas State home file. I can't wait till Aphelios is nerfed. Or just deleted from the game. Can't wait. I know these paths well. Yeah, we've been playing against a lot of a lot of people that play Zoe Aphelios, especially Aphelios, have gold Aphelios. We we have played against a ton of prismatic Aphelios. It seems like these people that like playing like these uh, you know the, the tryhards, I guess whatever you want to call them, the people that play 
Aphelios are really uh, going all out with the Prismatic Aphelios. I think being generic 3-4 is a little bit easier for us to deal with. Probably gonna need this golden sister. Cliff's Dragon this turn means we can play a Rillian Soul next turn. Tell me a story. I can't really sit here and take damage forever. I'm still at six. If I do go Cliff's Dragon right now, instead of a Rillian Soul, I could play like three, like, Next turn, like, three mana, Golden Sister. Okay. We're gonna do it. Cost reduction important. You see, that's the value of the Veil Temple of being able to get the two extra mana every single turn. What really hurt us the first game, what's hurting us now, is just our opponents able to cast more. Like, they're just able to spend more mana, and that's what uh, is so valuable in card games, is who can spend more mana. All right, so with having both star shapings, I think I'm able to... They had two Falling Comets? Both Lunari Priestess and Mountain Scryer made a Falling Comet? Wow, talk about high rolling. But anyway, like from, from an open attack, we can heal 10. That was such a waste of a Solari Priestess. Such a waste of a good card. You know your life is so good when you just completely waste a good card like that. Alright, Osman. Change the card back to Demacia. We'll do that for our next game.
No, this is game three. We are currently one and one. I went to Cosmic Rays and Golden Sister. That that would be the ideal turn. Maybe just Supernova. Get rid of the 7-6 and the Veil Temple. I can block the 7-6. That 7-6 doesn't have Overwhelm. Yeah, if, I like our chances. I like our chances quite a bit if these if there's like 200 to 50. <laughs> you know, like if we could just have a lot more life. So even though they have a Felios, we have more invoke stuff than they do. That Ridden in Stars, or so sorry, that, that, that Living Legends. Either another Golden Sister or Living Legends. Golden Sister is so good at stabilizing. Stars like jewels on the cloak of night. No, we do not have Temple. That has been a problem. Not as big of a problem as this. That's a pretty big problem right there. It's possible I hit the zero mana Celestial, but not very likely. The reason not to to try is because if they do end up playing something pre-combat, like maybe they play like another box to post pre-combat or something. I really hope they do, but no, they didn't. If they did, I was I would have been able to go Golden Sister plus Star Shaping. It's just not very likely that we hit the zero mana two one. It's obviously a much bigger problem. I was feeling just fine about this until that overwhelm. Now we're in trouble. How many hush do we got? Two? And we've already seen one? Really need Equinox. Really need Equinox of like Equinox this, play Golden Sister. Like that that's like the plan here, and then draw hush. Like Equinox is just you know take out the spell shield right now, then draw hush. Ugh. Well, at least I would have grabbed this, but that doesn't... I have the mana now. I couldn't find Equinox. I just couldn't pop the Spell Shield. Any of these cards. Alright. So, so far... You know, 50 minutes into the, the deck, it looks like we need Veil Temple. This is kind of why I hate Targon, though. It's 50 minutes, we played three games. Okay, so Sparklefly is too small. We'll keep the others with the Invoke. I know Mountain Scryer is kind of too small also, but we'll keep that with the Invoke. But so far, the two games against 
Um, Aphelios is really there. The games go forever, and so, like, the opponent's ability to get an extra two mana every turn over, you know, ten turns, extra twenty mana, like, that's... That has certainly been the difference in these games. That All that extra Veil Temple mana. I wanted the stun card. We need to find like obliterates or something for this Fiora. Well, that's an expensive obliterate, but it is an obliterate. And so I didn't play the charger last turn for one mana because I was able to, going to be able to play it this turn for zero mana. Okay, so we'll see if they have deny. If they do, we lose. If they don't, we play on. Okay, good game. One and three. Alright, back to Aphelios. So unfortunately, we played against Aphelios three times. Easily the worst card for us to see. Because it's the it's the best Targon card against Targon cards. Yeah, exactly. Our, our units were all just too small. Like, yeah, we're just too small for Fiora. You know, if... In a perfect world, right, we could have saved the, you know, the 9-mana obliterate in a perfect world, but our units were all just too small. I was kind of hoping they would play Aphelios, and then I was going to Serpent. <laughs> but this is the card that... This Veil vale Temple, this is the card that has been defeating us. All the extra mana. I know these paths well. No more hiding. Protect your shield me. Her flowers bring the moonlight with them. Oh, we will be free. <sighs> Pretty 
form. Equinox. Cool. Alright, well that was big. Taking down Felios. And then we'll silence this challenger. That was a good turn for us. Very good turn for us. Still get to just spend so much more mana than us. Maybe we should go on following comment, but. They don't have room to grab a follower right now. It's our time. One, two, three, four, eight. So now to eight. It reminds us there is always more to discover. So that's number eight. I won't have Bastion available, but I don't really need Bastion available anymore. I remember when Sharima came out and we played Targon for like a day. I know that was great. That was pretty great. So I was debating on whether to uh, give everything Challenger, give everything Lifesteal and Elusive. But with, you know, like, we're still at 8. We have the two star shapings to help stay alive. I think I can wait on the Sparklefly. I would like to kill Aphelios if possible. A good blocker from an open attack on the 5 6. What's up, Karma? Karma, 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 Alright, that Diane is not cool. Not cool, Diana, not cool. Stupid Targon 
cards. Why did that? I was gonna say, how'd that buff up this card? It didn't. Didn't have had any buff. Save her just to kill something like this. No one heal my Nexus for five. Dang. We just keep getting out cosmic inspiration by the other decks. Or the other Targon decks. Getting out, cosmic inspiration. I know your true heart. You cannot sway me. Yeah, <laughs> where are the opponent inspiration? I think they still have one at Solari Priestess invoke card in hand. I, I think this was a different Solari Priestess. I think. So I can go I can go Karma and then like double star shaping. Or I just like get a really insolent play. I'm not sure exactly what double my Double Star Shaping. I'm not exactly sure what that's going to accomplish at the current moment in time. So the problem, so, you know, we know they have a really nice Celestial in hand. So if I go Scourge and it's, you know, like the Obliterate one, they just obliterate my Scourge. But I could go Karma and Zoe and hold up Bastion. I think that's what I want to do. My spirit is an unquenchable fire. I want to go Karma first so that then we can give both Karma and the Aurelian Soul Elusive from the Zoe. a 6-2. It still kills my Karma. Probably can't let them kill Karma. This is difficult. I really want to hit with Zoe and make Behold the Infinite. But I don't really want my Karma to die. If I don't attack with Karma, then they can just block Zoe, and I don't I don't want that to die either. Nope. I took one second too long. Alright, well... All right, GG's. We have learned as much as we have suffered. Okay, so I think that we learned that Veiled Temple is the Targon King. That's what we learned. All three opponents that we played with Targon all had Aphelios and Veiled Temple, and they just had way more mana than us. You know, like those games, they last forever, and they were just able to spend 10, 20, 30 more mana 
than us over the course of the turns because of Ill Temple. And that's just like the difference in the game, right? Like it's just who who can spend more mana whenever you're whenever you both have as many cards as you ever want. And our opponents were able to spend a lot more mana. Three four Boxtopus was also just you know really good and just you know uh, mowing down all my like smaller invoke cards and everything like that. So between Boxtopus, all the the moon weapons that Aphelios makes, and then Veil Temple getting my opponent an extra two mana every single turn was just a little bit too much and so unfortunately we looked like a we looked like a, an invoke deck that's good against other mid-range decks that aren't targon but one that's not going to be good against aphelios and veiled temple because they're just going to be able to play many more cards than us and spend many much more mana than us so there we go that's that's kind of what we learned here um we could probably go temple ourselves, and that's probably something we'd have to do with this deck. Honestly, like we probably have to go temple ourselves to to try to keep up. That would probably mean like taking out like Moon Dreamer, I guess. You know, like trying to like figure out like where we we fit in. You know, probably between like Priestess Moon Dreamer, maybe somewhere in there. That's how you can fit in some Veil Temples. But you know, Veil Temple would also really help out some cards like Sparklefly or just like our our other like whole like the whole idea of pumping up our stuff. Because that's that's the thing. Like they would have like a even if we had like Equinox the Boxtopus, which we did a couple of times, that Boxtopus was turning into like you know seven you know five power, six power, seven power, eight power, because just every single turn they get that plus one plus one. Like that also really adds up. Also, so that's what it looked like. Veil Temple, all three games we played against Targon, Veil Temple just dominated us. Uh, so yeah, I think that's that's what you got to do. Got to play that card. That's what it'll look like. All right, but anyway, that's Elder Inspiration. So those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And hopefully y'all enjoyed the games. Um, hopefully y'all enjoy invoking because that's all we're doing here. All right, but that's all I got here for this deck. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.